you ever heard of a nin toaster? I have not. A what? A nin toadstool? Oh, toaster! I thought you said toadstool from the Mario universe. Uh, no, I've not heard of a nin toaster. Uh, it's basically when you strip the guts out of a Nintendo and stick it inside of a toaster and it, you turn it on by pressing down the plunger. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> that would be very cool. Um, I've been playing video games since I was about four, I guess. Um, I was playing in preschool. Um, I actually used to get in fights over playtime with the other kids there. So video games were a pretty big deal then? Yeah, it was a lot uh, of fun. What was the system there? That was a regular Nintendo. They had the power glove where you would put that thing on and control the video game that was amazing. I loved the power glove. It's so bad. The cool thing about video games is it hits almost every genre you can think of. Jocks that love to play sports, they just can't get enough of it, so they like to come home and they like to play sports. Or uh, the first person shooter guys, just like to blow stuff up and it's like a blow off steam kind of thing. At the end of the day, let's go blow up some monsters. I have owned uh, regular Nintendo, Super Nintendo, I won the GameCube and the Wii, and then regular Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and I think I might have owned a DS for a while. I, have, I don't know, I have it, I just don't know where it is. So, seven. The Nintendo market is somewhere in the neighborhood of 15% of video game sales. Right now, you know, the, the top of the heap is the Xbox and the Kinect, that was the big thing. Although, it was the Nintendo that really originally invented the stand-up and move around and play with the Wii. So Nintendo always comes out with the new technology first, and then generally somebody sometimes likes to steal it. Yeah, in, a, in an ever-shrinking world where companies are always in competition trying to get the next latest thing, there is a, a big need for personal creativity, doing things that, that are not done by everybody else. The Nintendo Entertainment System was released in 1987, revolutionizing the home video game system. Originally priced at $199, the NES still brings joy to gamers all over the world. Since then, modification or modding has been on the rise, allowing gamers to create their own versions of home video game systems. The Nintoaster is a modification of the NES where there are no two alike. The worker must first disassemble the Nintendo. He turns over the system and removes the six screws holding the original housing together. Once removed, the worker flips the system over and removes the top part of the shell. He then must remove the cartridge input by taking out six screws holding it into place. He then removes the newly freed plastic holder. Next, the worker removes the pin connector from the edge of the main circuit board. Now, he concentrates on removing the Nintendo board itself. To accomplish this, he must disconnect the controller ports, power, reset buttons, and RF adapter. Well, the old axe
axiom is measure twice and cut once. Uh, I just can't tell you the number of times that I thought I had things right and cut something and then realized that it was completely off. Once removed, the worker attaches the circuit board to a solder stand so the extension port and RF adapter can be removed. Next, he then desolders the heavily coated legs that hold the RF adapter in place. A video transistor is needed to supply both video and audio. The worker uses perf board and various other electronic pieces to create this. He now attaches it to the board in place of the old RF adapter. After soldering the ground and power slots, he's ready to create the new pin connector. When I was very young, uh, model painting was my big thing. We didn't have video games back then, so usually building cars and airplanes and, and models required uh, working with plastics and, and knowing what kind of paints to use. The worker begins by removing the outer casing of the toaster. To get the outer shell free, he removes the bottom screws. Next, he must remove all of the heating elements for safety purposes. Next, the worker measures where he's going to mount the perf board the connector is mounted to. Next, he runs the IDE cables through the frame to solder it to the original board. He mounts the board to the soldering stand and solders one of the IDE cables to the reader. Next, he mounts the Nintendo board on the toaster frame using elbow brackets. So I see the, the kind of uh, materials that are coming out. People are either using video games to build things or taking things that exist and creating video games from those materials. I mean, I don't, like, I don't think that games now are worse or anything. I just think that, you know, there's that nostalgia um, of, like, when you listen to music, you remember back then, or when you, like, see a gold game, you go back to that time period. Yeah, Nintendo is pretty much the only one that's ever captured a timeless essence. With everything else is what's the new game coming out, what's coming out, what's, what can you play that's brand new, but everybody will play Mario and sit down and play the original Mario and still love to play it and continue to play that over and over and over again. I also like the difficulty. I think some games now are a little bit simple and so you can just, but I think the games back then had to be hard because they were really short so they made it more difficult to make the game like Mega Man. 